today's puzzle was why um, the lack of economic development and inequality uh, can lead to conflict in some cases, but not in others. Um, and I thought that Burundi would be an example of uh, a country that has had experience uh, both with challenges of economic development as well as with violence. Um, while it's not possible to get into all the details of the Burundian case, we could spend an entire semester on it, um, I want to highlight several things about the country uh, and its neighbors that connects uh, both with the conflict readings um, that we've covered this week as well as um, the human security uh, elements we're going to be also discussing for the rest of the semester. Uh, I think Burundi is an unfortunate example of a state that's faced a lot of challenges that other states, both in that region and beyond, uh, have faced. First, there was the push to um, democratize after the end of the Cold War, um, which led to an internationalized um, civil conflict that, um, that ended with a negotiated settlement problematic uh, elections that happened afterwards that led to a leader who didn't want to leave and change the constitution so that he was able to stay on for longer, landlocked and um, chronically underdeveloped state with few natural resources, long-standing ethnic divisions. Uh, it's been subject to international pressures uh, in recent years and has taken um, steps to withdraw from the International Criminal Court um, and other international norms. Um, so we'll be going through a lot of these separate issues um, in, the, in uh, the workshop related to uh, Burundi and also these issues you're gonna see cropping up again and again in the cases and in the readings that we're covering over the course of this um, semester. Um, but I wanted to, to touch on a couple of basic facts about the country and some background events that'll be useful uh, for the workshop on Wednesday. Start with a, a couple of basic facts of, uh, of the country profile. These are all um, coming from the CIA fact book. You can find them in other sources as well. Um, a little bit under 12 million uh, people within the country, slightly over a million in the nation's capital of Bujumbura. The size of the territory is small. It's a small mountainous uh, country. The size of the territory is roughly about 12%, uh, 12 times the size of the ECT. So relatively small, comparable in size to, size to Rwanda in the north. Um, the main ethnic groups are also pretty much the same size, um, and they've had the same challenges in Burundi as in Rwanda, which probably more people are familiar with their uh, history over the last 25 years, um, with about 85% Hutus, 15% uh, Tutsi, and the remaining 1% or so, or, or so uh, Twa peoples. Um, the average life expectancy, something that I never really thought about when I was young, but I start to think about more as I get older. Um, the men's life expectancy is a little under 65 years, and women, it's almost 69 years old, um, which is 15, 18 years less than a lot of um, uh, developed countries. Um, agriculture is responsible for over... Um, 40% of the GDP and uh, about 90% of the employment of the population. We're going to see that in other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa as well, that agriculture uh, plays a huge role in the economic production of the country. And um, uh, the, pro uh, the products there, uh, coffee um, and, and others that are exported, are subject to price fluctuations that could be difficult and subject to the weather, um, which leads to less stable um, government sources of money. Um, the GDP per capita with purchase power parity is only um, around 700 US dollars per year, um, which is one of the lowest uh, in the world. And before the recent troubles, um, foreign aid made up a huge amount of the, the country's budget. Almost half of the national income came from foreign aid. Um, you can see with uh, population, which we're going to talk about more in a couple of weeks, that uh, demographic challenges can link to other human security challenges, uh, political uh, stability, 
um, and the probability of violence. Um, and you see from the Hutu's population pyramid that, uh, the, sorry, the Burundi's population uh, pyramid that the vast majority of people are uh, quite young. The median age is 17.7 years. So you guys are already above the median age uh, if you're living in Burundi. Um, demography is definitely an issue we're going to be coming back to later on in the semester. Um, a brief timeline. I didn't want to overwhelm the slides with bullet points of all these different events. They're in the, um, the notes if you guys are curious. They're also taken from the BBC's um, timeline. They're really useful if you want a, a quick kind of snapshot of when the, the crucial events happen with any kind of country that you're looking at. Um, uh, gained independence, uh, like Rwanda, from Belgium in 1962, um, got rid of the monarchy and became a republic in 1966. A couple years uh, later, there was um, uh, a series of massacres in, in 1972. Roughly 120,000 uh, Hutus were killed by government forces and their supporters in the wake of a Hutu-led uprising against uh, the government. Four years later, there was a successful military coup, uh, and um, once power was solidified, um, Burundi turned into a one-party one state in 1981. There was another coup uh, six years later in 1987, and a lot of the countries we're going to look at, um, if you have one coup, you're much more likely to have another coup uh, over time because a coup is a fundamental challenge to um, the government institutions in a similar way to um, political violence. After the end of the Cold War, there was an, a new constitution brought into effect in 1992 that called for um, the state to be moved to a multi-party um, uh, political system. Elections were held in 1993. The first democratic elect democratically elected president um, came into office and was assassinated less than 100 days after taking office in 1993. Um, that sparked a series of reprisals that escalated into full-blown civil war that, um, led, that lasted from 1993 to 2005, as with a lot of the conflicts that we will see over the course of the semester. They're often quite long-running and quite damaging. Uh, roughly 300,000 people died during that um, civil war. Less than the 800,000 estimated that died in the Rwandan civil war that started the year after. Uh, after the, the democratic elected president was killed in 93, parliament um, chose a successor. That um, president was killed in the same plane uh, as the Rwandan president, uh, coming back from talks in Arusha, Tanzania in 1994. That sparked um, the Rwandan uh, genocide over 100 days in, in 94. Um, Burundi was already in uh, uh, ongoing conflict. There were, um, it was a long running conflict, gradually ended with um, a, new, a negotiated settlement in 2005. Um, as with a lot of these conflicts we're gonna look at, there were democratic uh, elections after that as a segue to um, uh, supposedly a more democratic and stable system. 2005, Pierre Nkurunziza, um, head of the Hutu uh, FDD party, um, won the election. Uh, his party won the election, and then he was selected as uh, as um, president. He was reelected in 2010. Uh, the constitution said that there is a term limit for two terms. After the end of his, uh, towards the end of his second term, he decided um, that. His rule was essential to continue for um, one more term. Um, that led to a lot of pushback. He's not alone in trying to dis um, change um, the political system or try to find a way to stay in power. Vladimir Putin has taken similar steps in, in recent years. Um, but in the neighborhood of Burundi, uh, Paul Kagame was the has been the only political leader there since the end of the civil war in the 1990s. Um, Yari Museveni in Uganda is one of the longest serving um, leaders uh, in the world. He's been in power, I think, since the 1980s. Um, both uh, the um, Laurent Kabila and his son um, were have been in, in power uh, since the end of uh, the civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo only um, in the last couple of years has been a change. 
Um, so this is not necessarily uh, an uncommon thing. We're going to see this over the course of the semester. Um, there was uh, pushback uh, against his standing for the third term. Um, uh, there was uh, pressure brought to bear by those uh, donor governments that were propping up the national income. As I said earlier, EU stopped um, paying aid after um, the the uh, running for a third term and uh, crackdowns on protesters and, and increasingly vocal opposition uh, to him staying on. Not coincidentally, in 2017, he withdrew um, Burundi from uh, the International Criminal Court so as not to be subject to um, any kind of um, uh, potential liability for cracking down on the protesters. Um, in 2016 um, and we'll, we'll we'll see what happens in in a couple of years uh, after that and we'll see in the next video what happened to um, President Kurenziza uh, quite recently but I think uh, overall Burundi is a almost a prototypical example of a small underdeveloped country uh, that struggled with violence, political and economic stability um, for almost all of its uh, post-independence history. Um, and I think knowing that co that context and the background um, that the, the country uh, has is going to make our discussions in the workshop and the recent events uh, even more interesting. So in the workshop, we're going to be um, talking about the connections between uh, the conflict readings that we've done, um, this specific case, and we'll do this over the course of the semester, trying to ground some of this general um, uh, theoretical approaches in or comparative approaches in the readings and tie it to a specific country. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll leave you now uh, with a brief update of a couple of uh, relevant relevant events that have happened in Burundi uh, within the last year and we'll take that into the workshop on Wednesday.